Hi friends, my name is Andrew Cooney and it's my joy to welcome you to kind of our Christianity 101. An introduction to spirituality and a sense of who we are as Christians and who we are as a church. I'm glad that you've chosen to take these modules as a step forward in your faith and in your journey with us together at Bethany. Today we're going to be talking about our Christianity, our spirituality, and also about the church itself. When people think about Jesus, a lot of images come to mind. And when they think about Christianity, many other images come to mind. And so when we have this conversation in the beginning, we invite people to pause and to explore some of those things that go on inside them when they think about those things. Sometimes very positive images come to mind, like the church helping people, aiding the poor, helping those who need food or clothing or shelter. Sometimes negative images come to mind, like the church always asking for money or not always being ethical. Today we want to talk about what Jesus thought about when he established Christianity and established the church itself. So let's talk first about Christianity. As we think about this, we begin by understanding what God meant when he sent Jesus. In John chapter 3, in one of the most famous verses in Scripture, John chapter 3 verse 16, the Bible says, John writes, For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Such a common verse. But to understand it is an important part of our faith. What is John trying to say in these verses? Well, first of all, he's telling us that all of us have moments in life where we feel distant from God. Moments where we've said things or done things. Maybe we've hurt someone that we care about. Maybe we've made a bad decision. And all of those things can have an effect upon how we feel in our relationship with God. If you were to pause and reflect, I'm sure that there are times in life where you felt closer to God and times where you felt more distant. Times where you felt good about yourself and times where you didn't. And the Bible says this is pretty common. As a matter of fact, it says that for all of us, we were created to have a special relationship with God. In John chapter 10, verse 10, it says that I have come in order that you might have life to its fullest. God desires that kind of relationship with us, which is fantastic. And some people don't even know that. Some people think that God is out to get them or that God doesn't want the best for them. But the Gospels and the story of Jesus is just the opposite. We find Jesus looking for people who don't have perfect lives and encouraging them to follow him because he loves them and cares about them. But he also knows and acknowledges that we are not perfect. And we know that too, don't we? I mean, I certainly do. As a matter of fact, if I were to have all three of my kids surround me at the table, we're not even going to talk about my wife, they could tell you how unperfect I am. And that lack of perfection is not just that we didn't do our best. It's that there are times when we make choices that are hurtful or even harmful. The Bible calls that sin, and it says that everyone does it. The book of Romans, Paul says, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And it's important to understand that fact and that distinction as we move forward because that affects how we feel about ourselves and even our relationship with God. The good news of our faith is that God sent Jesus to restore that relationship. As a matter of fact, Christianity can really be thought of as God sending his son to restore a right relationship between us and God, which is really what the cross is about. The cross has two parts to it. It has a vertical part that reminds us of our relationship with God and a horizontal part that reminds us of our relationship with others. But it also looks a bit like a bridge, doesn't it? And if you think about our relationship with God, the cross forms a bridge between us and God. It's an invitation for us to get closer to God. It's God's way of saying, I'm here with open arms to welcome you. And that's really start with where we start with our spirituality. That God loves us, that he has open arms for everyone, and that he welcomes everyone to come to the foot of the cross and to realize God's goodness for them and accept his grace. As a matter of fact, John Wesley talked about this understanding of grace. Grace comes in three forms. It comes first when you don't know anything about God and God loves you, which is an amazing gift. It comes secondly when you come to understand God's grace and you receive it as your gift. And thirdly, 
when you grow and learn and your love becomes better and more perfect in life. Those three forms of grace are all gifts from God that help us to grow in our spirituality. When we enter into a relationship with God, we understand Christ as our Savior. And when he guides us in life, we understand him as our Lord. And part of our spirituality is centered around that understanding of Jesus. He called his disciples to follow him. And so here at Bethany, we do a lot of work trying to teach people to understand what Jesus said and what he's asking us to do in life and the grace that he's given to us along the way. So Jesus invites us to become followers, all of us. It wasn't just the 12 disciples. It was everyone he invited to the table to be his followers. And that invitation is open to everyone. And so one of the first steps in our conversations with people about their spirituality is to ask them whether they understand that and whether they've actually accepted God's invitation to say, yes, I realize who you are and what you've done, and I accept that gift. As a matter of fact, I'm excited that you offered me that gift, God, because there's a part inside of us that sometimes feels like we have to earn God's love or do more good things than the bad things that we've done to fix it. And the cross is God's way of saying, I'm going to fix it. You do not have to spend your life worrying about whether you are good enough. I'm going to fix it for you. And that's why he sent Jesus, which is such a powerful gift for us. And so the Bible shares in the book of Revelation this image. And maybe you've seen the painting of Jesus standing at a door. And it says, behold, this is Jesus. I stand at the door and knock. And if anyone hear my voice and open that door, kind of metaphorically open the door of their hearts and let me in, I will be with them and they will be with me. The notion being that God actually wants to be with us. Like walk beside us each day. Be there when we fall asleep at night to take care of all the things that we worry about and have a hard time letting go of. Be there when we wake up in the morning when a new day comes. Walk beside us every minute of the day, whether it's in good times or hard times, knowing that God is there for us. And this is the gift of God's presence with us. It's the offering of God's Holy Spirit to us to be present with us all the time. That gift is open to you, and all you have to do is receive it. It's as simple as saying, God, I know that I have not lived a perfect life, and I need what you did for me on the cross. I welcome it. I ask that you come into my life and lead me and guide me as Lord and Savior. I prayed that prayer when I was 11 years old, and I've invited many others to pray it. And I invite you to pray it if you've never prayed that prayer. It's amazing what can happen when you accept God's invitation. And so we move in our spirituality from Christianity to the church. And it's interesting because so many people distinguish the church as formal religion versus their spirituality and their personal relationship with God. But if you look in the Gospels, it's Jesus who started the church. It was his idea. Now, when we think about the church, we think about things like what's on this plate, which is a commemorative plate of Bethany in its old form. And we think of the church building and gathering together there with people. But when Jesus established the idea of the church, that was not what he had in mind. In fact, the word church in Jesus' language doesn't have anything to do with building. The word actually means the called out one. The technical Greek word is ecclesia. And the idea was, well, let me take you back to your early American history. Do you remember the story of Paul Revere riding on a horseback from town to town, shouting, the British are coming, the British are coming? Well, the ecclesia is this old concept before the internet and newspapers and television that word was spread by individuals. And in important cases, by individuals coming into a town and sharing that news as loudly as they could to spread the news as fast as they could. And ecclesia happens when an individual comes into a town and begins shouting news that the entire town needs to hear. And everyone who comes out of their doors to hear that news is called the ecclesia, the called out ones. And the image is that Jesus kind of stands in the center of town and shares his message of love and grace and forgiveness and peace. And those who come out and hear it are the church. 
it really doesn't have anything to do with the building. It has everything to do with people who are willing to respond to God and to be a part of the kind of people that God is looking to build his kingdom. Not perfect people by any means, but people who are willing to learn and to grow and to deepen their own love, their love for one another horizontally and their love for God vertically. And that's really what the church is all about. So here at Bethany, we'll be talking about God's love and God's grace and God's goodness. We'll be talking about what it means for us as a congregation to be the hands and the feet of Christ. What does it mean to be the way that the world understands Jesus through our love and our outreach, our feeding, our clothing, and our worship of God? And in that process, we celebrate God, we grow in our faith, and we serve the world, which is our mission statement, to celebrate, to serve, and to grow. And so much of what we do here at Bethany is about those things, to celebrate all that God has done for us and others, to serve God and our world, and to grow in our faith. We want to ultimately be a vibrant reflection of God's love. And so, as you think through your spiritual journey, love needs to be at the center of it because of God's love for you and because of God's call for us to be love. And part of our spirituality is the daily basis of learning what it means to be more like Jesus and the kind of love he had for our world. So as we start this, we invite you to walk through this with an open heart to understand more about God, to understand more about yourself, and to understand more about faith. None of us, myself, Pastor Dawn, or any of the staff, feel like we're better than anyone else. We are all on a journey to learn what it means to love better and to understand God. And each day we find out new things and we watch God do amazing things here at Bethany. I hope that part of your journey is encountering that same grace and also seeing some of the same God stories that we see as people touch lives and as we watch God do what only God can do. Thanks for joining me today. And I hope that as you walk through the next few modules that you discover new things about yourself, about God, and about Bethany. Thanks for joining us.